Please welcome to the stage National Deputy Spokesperson, Citizens Coalition for Change, Gift Ostalos Siziba. Thank you. The year is 1993. 13 years after the nation of Zimbabwe was birthed from a long, brutal war of liberation from Rhodesian colonial rule. Four years after a genocide against the devilish speaking minority that claimed over 20,000 lives of ordinary people. This is a year that I made my entry into the world, born to a gardener and a housemaid in Chabalala in Blawayo, in Zimbabwe. They named me Gift, calling forth the future from their dreams. Little did they know that those hopes and dreams would be thrown in the flesh. 2008 brought with it an economic crisis that led to rest the hopes for a better future and ravaged the lives of ordinary people, and my family included. At the age of 15 years, I was employed at a grinding mill, but still, the money that I got was not sufficient to fund my education. And this education was, to me, the only platform and the only gateway out of poverty. In those hard times, what drove me was the pursuit of an idea an idea that could transform my life, transform the life of my family, the life of my countrymen, and of course, the life of Africans and the continent that I loved the most. The idea of freedom with dignity, the idea of freedom with equality, and more importantly, freedom with expression. I took I took action to bring hope to the life that I believed in. I'd work hard at school, get good grades, and fortunately I was awarded the prestigious Joshua Nkomo Scholarship, which is funded by one of Africa's billionaires, Dr. Strive Masiwa, a man who believes in the value of education and the power of ideas. Decades of experience with naked repression, with poverty, and deplorable inhuman living conditions, and a failed state became the fuel of my journey as an advocate for human rights and democracy. Venturing into the political landscape of my country in a world and a situation where I was constantly having to battle with those that believe that age defies our ability to lead and the capabilities of being a leader has been oftentimes been discouraging and a difficult journey. I decided nonetheless that despite my youth, I would build from my abilities, from my knowledge and convictions to speak truth to power. I would use the power of ideas and the beauty of language to speak for and on behalf of the oppressed people of Africa and the world. That if we use our voice, we can find our power. And with our power, I have no doubt that we can change the world. That is why today, I'm working as a political scientist and a leader in Zimbabwe. In the democratic movement, the Citizens Coalition is led by President Africa Nelson Chamiso. We believe and know that the power of ideas is building a healthy democracy and that this requires young people who must be involved. That is the key issue, to be involved. I know that is in, in this journey I'm not alone. That to pursue this, I have young people that support this cause, that believe in the idea of democracy. The struggle is long. 
is hard. But we're not capitulating to despair. Because we are inspired by those who have walked before us. Those who have held the beacon of audacious hope high in the sky. In 2009, a man many considered too young to run was sworn in as the 44th president of the United States of America. <laughs> president Obama is an inspiration to many young Africans, and myself included. His political campaign and his time in office were built on the promise of a democracy where equality and opportunity and equality before the law built on the ideals of self-government and individual freedom. Last year, I became a member of the Obama Foundation program in Africa, where I had the opportunity to connect with different young Africans from across the world, discussing on the possibilities of a democracy and the future we hold, to start and understand how democracy works, building democratic resilience, fostering our diversity and the strength that comes with it. It is one of the reasons why throughout my experiences in politics, in Zimbabwe and in Africa, I've continued to hold the ideals that President Obama has long demonstrated, the idea of hope. The idea of a world where we learn to live together to cooperate together, to recognize the dignity of other human beings. I run with this idea boldly because I know that this is the idea whose time has come. And you know, fellow world citizens, that nothing and nobody can stop the idea whose time has come. I'm honored to welcome on stage President Barack Obama. Thank you. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Gift for that rousing introduction. He was getting me fired up backstage, <laughs> getting me excited. And, and thank you, more importantly, Gift, for all the work that you're doing to get young people involved in preserving and improving uh, democracy. And I want to thank all of you. The panelists that we just saw, I, I was backstage watching the panel on an inclusive economy. I told them I, I am such a policy nerd. I was listening to everything. And it was scintillating uh, and enlightening. And, and so I'm grateful for all the panelists that we've had. Uh, I want to thank our partners at Columbia University, my alma mater, and uh, the University of Chicago, where I taught law for a decade. I want to thank them for being part of the inaugural Obama Foundation Democracy Forum. Now, since its inception, our foundation's mission has been to inspire, empower, and connect the next generation of change makers. And all of you, most of you in the audience, uh, fall in that category. We now have a global network of thousands of leaders, not just here in the United States, but in every corner of the globe, in Europe, in Africa, in the Asia-Pacific region, in Latin America. They're entrepreneurs and elected officials, nonprofit leaders and grassroots activists, artists and journalists and educators, all of them tackling some of the most vital issues of our time, from climate change to income inequality, from efforts to reduce racial and ethnic conflict to efforts to expand opportunity for women and girls. And, and I just have to say, the determination and the passion of these leaders, many of whom are here, are already making an impact 
in lives saved, environments restored, children educated. Many of you are creating new models for clean energy generation, new ways of thinking about poverty alleviation, and it is inspiring. It's a little humbling, because I really didn't have my act together like you guys did at your age. And the good news is we're just scratching the surface of what's next, what this next generation is capable of. In fact, uh, today I'm happy to announce that because all of you have shown what's possible, uh, because of the consistently high interest in our programs, we will be launching a new and expanded Leaders USA program in the coming months that can help that can help more young people put their idealism to work. Now, one of our goals is to create a community and shared platform for these emerging leaders so they can learn from each other and share best practices and form strategic partnerships across issues and across borders. And, and one thing that's become obvious in these conversations is that progress on so many of the issues that they are fighting for is linked to a broader commitment to democratic values. 